from the vai vedrai vai hi everyone welcome to my channel today i'm gonna show you how i made this alegria costume slash cosplay ish outfit from Cirque du Soleil. If you've never heard of Cirque du Soleil or don't know much about it, we're gonna cover a few basics as well. But if you are here for the first time, my name is Lana. I'm a linguist by education and artist at heart. Sometimes on my channel, I talk about languages and various linguistic things. And sometimes I make costumes-ish. So if any of those topics are of interest to you, feel free to subscribe and tell me you are here in the comments down below. What is Cirque du Soleil? What is Alegria? And how did I get it into my head to make this thing? Cirque du Soleil is essentially a display of human talent, hard work and creativity. That's how I would describe it. And the costume that I made is actually from Alegria in a New Light, which is the revised, revived show that was brought back in 2019. I've not yet seen it live, it's still being performed, so a girl can dream, maybe one day, but I've definitely seen plenty of clips on YouTube and I just fell in love with everything, everything about it. So I'm here to share that joy and excitement with you guys. Here's a little bit about Alegria Costumes Evolution that is brought to you by the voiceover Lana. Alegria was first performed in 1994, and the costumes, of course, matched the vibe of the time. What they wanted to do in the renewed version was to humanize the characters. That meant taking away some exaggerated elements. For example, the masks no longer cover the entire face, and the makeup is toned down to allow more of the artist's face to shine through, and so on. But still, they wanted to stay true to the original concept, and the result is really great. It's contemporary, but still very fantasy. It's giving very much Alice in Wonderland vibe. What do you guys think? The costumes went through many fittings, tweaks, and several versions. I didn't focus on others that much, but for the singer in white, that meant that the costume became wider and wider as the versions progressed, and the skirt change is also quite noticeable, I would say, as well as the artist's hairstyle. You'll see in my version, I made an amalgamation of different versions of the costume. I took elements I liked the most and that were also quite easy to recreate. I really liked the little shades of blue, so I kept that, and also I made the skirt from curtains, from this sort of lighter fabric that kind of looks torn, as opposed to these sharp, I don't even know, but this has to be some kind of metal or plastic. That would have been much harder to recreate. Now, why did I choose to make this costume in particular? Well, first of all, it looked like a fun challenge. I knew right away that it wouldn't just be sewing, it would also be more of a, it would be more of an arts and crafts project. There's something very whimsical about it. All of the costumes there are just so beautiful and I love how they are both aesthetically gorgeous on stage as well as practical because, you know, okay, not for the singers, but the athletes, the performers, they need to do a lot of different kinds of movements in them. And so they're functional and beautiful. Perfect. The way I tackled this is I looked at a lot of reference photos. And the way I do these things usually is I try to deconstruct the costume, right? See how many layers there are, what elements of the costume are there. And I came to the conclusion that this dress would be made or this outfit would be made of a cage skirt, a tutu, then of course the top slash body suit, and the choker part. And so I started with something that I'm at least somewhat familiar with, the cage skirt. Instead of boning, plastic boning, I opted for plastic zip ties that I had used many times in my corsets or stays, and they work beautifully. But the thing about plastic zip ties is they're rather short for big hoops, right? You need to find a way to elongate them somehow. What I wanted to do first was connect them in this sort of way, but then I decided, hang on, if you heat plastic enough, you can sort of melt it and then fuse it together, right? And that's what I did in the end. I made three hoops, but it turned out they weren't strong enough to support the weight of all this, uh, of all this tool. So what I did was I added a wire hoop. I also figured out that the tool that I originally had on 
there wasn't really enough of it. It was fine, but the original skirt had a lot more um, tulle. I bought four more meters of white tulle and of light blue tulle, and then I made it into a um, into a tutu skirt, a non-sew tutu skirt. You just cut several strips, you fold them in half, and then you just tie them onto the elastic. Um, but believe it or not, the crinoline is heavy. Like, not super heavy, but you can definitely feel it. Probably also because we usually don't have any kind of weight around in this area that our hips would need to support. It's, it's a different feeling, for sure. And then came the final layer, these strips. Um, that are identical to the material that I have here. I also got some old lace curtains um, and painted them in various shades of blue. This one's a little bit darker. This is just painted and they're not completely painted, just in, in bits. Some of them are left white. The bodice was an interesting thing too because I had never made a bodice like this. And this is made of... So on the sleeves it's just this material uh, this beautiful lacy fabric and the under layer is also a beige jersey uh, and they're both stretchy so you can you know so you can put it on and then the choker let me show you the choker from up close the rhinestones are hand sewn on so please give this video a like if you hate sewing rhinestones on things and if you like seeing other people do that and sewing those on, you might think, oh my god, there's so many, that must have been horrible. Actually, it's very, I, I personally find it very therapeutic. So that was uh, a very fun part of making this project. And then for the makeup, I just looked at a few reference photos and I did this. Yes, it's exaggerated, it's not really beautiful, beautiful, but I think it looks fine from afar. And obviously, as stage makeup, it has to be a little bit over the top. To, to look good from for the audience from afar. And it's actually a very fun look to do, very colorful. I hadn't, I hadn't worn makeup in pff, far too long. When I went to college, I stopped wearing it because it was just too much work to put it on in the morning and then in the... I was lazy, that's why I stopped wearing it. I don't regret it, but you know, then trying to do makeup. If you're getting into makeup after several years of not doing any makeup, it's best to do clown makeup, right? Because <laughs> you can't really mess that up. It's supposed to look a little bit... Well, not all that neat and tidy. Well, that's it for today, I guess. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Also, this is the last video for this year. Thank you to everyone who's been watching and who's joined our little community. It was just, it was a very fun year for me here on YouTube. And there's just nothing better than sharing what you enjoy with people who also enjoy it with you. So thank you all for your support and I hope you continue to enjoy the content. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, go spend it with friends and family and just enjoy yourselves over the holidays. Let's all unwind, recharge, and I will be seeing you very soon.